Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about stress management. I'm going to begin by laying a foundation with some definitions, because understanding the definitions helps us to be able to recognize patterns, and that helps us get to the root of the problem. Stress is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Anxiety is an unpleasant but vague sense of apprehension. It's a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Worry has a couple of definitions that may seem unrelated at first, but they are all connected. First of all, worry means a state of anxiety and uncertainty over actual or potential problems. It implies concern mixed with fear. Worry can also mean to tear at, gnaw on, pull at, or fiddle with continually. Like, a dog can worry a bone by continually gnawing at it. You can worry the knot at the end of a rope by continually fiddling with it and perhaps fraying it. It has to do with the idea of touching or disturbing something repeatedly. Worry is not a fleeting emotion. It tends to be nagging, persistent, and incessant. Some synonyms for worry include to annoy, plague, pester, or torment. Panic is an intense feeling of overpowering extreme anxiety or terror. While each of these issues are slightly different, each of these emotions are related and connected by the presence of fear. And any of these forms of fear can cause stress. Fear arises with the threat of harm, either physical, emotional, or psychological and it can come from either real or imagined circumstances. These unpleasant emotions can arise from imminent physical threat, or they may arise from a perceived emotional and mental threat. Everyday life gives many opportunities to experience fear, anxiety, worry, stress, or even panic. My objective today is to share coping skills to help effectively deal with these challenges. Now, emotions by themselves are neither good nor bad. Instead, they are either helpful or hurtful depending on intensity, duration, and circumstances. Fear, anxiety, and worry are psychological and physiological responses to danger and can be a central part of our harm avoidance system. In other words, they are intended to help keep us safe. However, if they get out of hand, they may interfere with our physical, mental, and emotional well-being. They can harm our health, performance, relationships, and happiness. So I said emotions are really neither good nor bad. So first, let's talk about the positives. All emotions have a positive aspect. Fear, anxiety, worry, and stress can activate the sympathetic nervous system, often called the fight or flight response. Activating the fight-or-flight system can help increase the physiological response known as arousal. Now, I'm not talking about sexual arousal here. The definition of arousal is the physiological and psychological state of being awoken, or of sense organs being stimulated to the point of perception. In other words, it means we're awake and alert. It increases heart rate and blood pressure and causes a condition of sensory alertness, mobility, and readiness to respond. This higher state of arousal means we're ready to fight or run away as necessary, and it helps keep us safe. In addition to protecting our well-being, a slight increase of arousal caused by fear, anxiety, worry, or stress can actually improve our performance. Increased arousal caused by feelings of stress when you're taking an important exam can help you focus on the test, and it can help you remember the information that you studied. Likewise, when an athlete is poised to make an important move, like say a basketball player is about to shoot a free throw, 
an increased level of arousal can help him make the shot. Our bodies and our minds perform better with a little bit of excitement or stress. However, this is true only up to an optimal point of arousal. If we feel too much stress or anxiety, then the level of performance drops, sometimes dramatically. For example, too much test anxiety can impair your ability to concentrate and it makes it more difficult to remember the correct answers. Or if a basketball player gets too stressed out, he may choke and miss the shot. In psychology, this relationship between arousal levels and performance is known as the Yerkes-Dodson Law. The law was first described in 1908 by psychologists Robert Yerkes and John Dillingham Dodson. Through a series of experiments, they found a relationship between performance and arousal. They noticed that increased arousal can help improve performance, but only up to a certain point. And at the point where arousal becomes excessive, performance diminishes. Fear, anxiety, worry, and stress are often considered negative emotions, but they are actually part of a beautifully orchestrated design to benefit us by increasing our performance and helping to keep us safe. They are not really our enemy, and we don't need to eliminate them entirely or pretend that we don't have these emotions. Remember that according to the Yerkes-Dodson curve, a little bit of arousal caused by fear, anxiety, worry, or stress can actually improve our performance efficiency. If we have low arousal, then we don't care, and we don't perform very well. But with a moderate level of stress, we actually increase our level of performance. We are energized to face whatever challenge is ahead. However, high levels of stress and anxiety decrease performance because we become overwhelmed. The arousal caused by stress and anxiety no longer gives that little boost to help us overcome challenges. Instead, it actually compounds the problem by making it worse. We often call helpful levels of stress eustress and hurtful levels of stress distress. Most people are aware of the negative consequences of stress and anxiety and its toll on society and on individuals. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the U.S., affecting about 40 million adults in the United States ages 18 and older, which is about 18% of the population. That means that on average, about one out of every six people suffer from some type of anxiety disorder. Furthermore, it's not uncommon for someone with an anxiety disorder to also suffer from depression or vice versa. Nearly one half of those diagnosed with depression are also diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Some experts believe that depression is caused by a feeling that you are unable to solve your problems. Therefore, learning how to cope with fear, anxiety, worry, and stress in a healthy manner is an excellent way to help prevent depression from creeping in. We want to be able to calm and manage these emotions so they can benefit us rather than harming us. Understanding a little about the autonomic nervous system helps in understanding how the results of our emotions can be either helpful or hurtful. Our bodies have an autonomic nervous system which regulates bodily functions such as heart rate, respiratory rate, pupillary response, and so on. The autonomic nervous system has separate branches. One is called the sympathetic nervous system and is often called the fight or flight system. Another branch is called the parasympathetic nervous system, which is often called the rest and digest system. In many cases, both of these systems have opposite actions where one system activates a physiological response and the other inhibits it. In other words, our bodies are designed to naturally take care of things like our digestion and our immune system to help keep us nourished and healthy. But during times of an emergency, the body puts those things on hold in order to be able to direct energy into more important things like the ability to run away from danger right now. Our bodies produce a stress hormone called cortisol, which is like a built-in alarm. It works with certain parts of your brain to control your mood, motivation, and fear. 
It accelerates heartbeat, increases blood sugar, and alters other body systems to prepare your body to respond to the danger. When your body is on high alert, cortisol can alter or shut down functions that might get in the way. These might include your digestive or reproductive systems, your immune system, or even your growth processes. After the danger has passed, then your cortisol level should calm down and your heart, blood pressure, and other body systems will get back to normal. This is a wonderful, natural, and automatic process designed to help keep us safe and enable us to quickly respond to danger. However, this fight or flight system is only intended to be in use for short periods of time. And if we keep our bodies constantly in the fight or flight response with worry and stress, it can negatively affect virtually every organ system in the body. According to the National Institutes of Health, prolonged stress has been shown to cause numerous health problems, including anxiety and depression, headaches, heart diseases, memory and concentration problems, problems with digestion, trouble sleeping, weight gain, weakening of the immune system, making you more likely to have colds or other infections, high blood pressure, upset stomach, ulcers and acid reflux, increased rapid heartbeat and heart palpitations, panic attacks, cardiovascular problems, increase in blood sugar levels, irritable bowel problems, back aches, tension headaches or migraines, chronic fatigue syndrome, respiratory problems and heavy breathing, and worsening of skin conditions such as eczema. Chronic fear, anxiety, worry, and or stress can also negatively affect our performance at work, our relationships, our happiness, and our well-being. When we're on the wrong side of that yerk dodson curve, our performance in every area diminishes. Next, I want to explain about stressors and coping skills. A stressor is an activity, event, or other stimulus that causes stress. Stressors are those things that cause fear, anxiety, worry, stress, or panic in our lives. Coping refers to our response to those stressors. It relates to how we deal with and attempt to overcome problems and difficulties. If we were to draw a graph of our stressors and our coping skills, we could get a pretty good idea of our state of being. If our stressors are low and our coping skills are high, then we are at peace. If our stressors are high and our coping skills are also high, it might be challenging, but we are typically able to overcome any obstacles. However, if we find that the stressors are high and our coping skills are low, then our feelings of stress are high and we feel overwhelmed and unable to cope. What we want to do is find ways to decrease our stressors and increase our coping skills. So let's explain some more about coping skills. Our coping skills can typically be broken down into two areas of focus. The first is our expertise. In other words, it is our level of skill, ability, confidence, and resources to do whatever task is before us. For example, a five-year-old might be overwhelmed by the task of adding six plus seven, but to a 10-year-old, that task is extremely simple. Likewise, for a 15 or 16-year-old, the multidimensional skills necessary to drive a car may seem overwhelming, but an adult may find that same task relaxing since it requires very little effort. This is true every time we learn a new skill. As our expertise level increases, the task becomes easier and we're able to cope with the demands. Another aspect of coping skills is called somatic quieting. Somatic quieting turns on the relaxation response in the body. The relaxation response is essentially the opposite reaction to the stress response. It is a process of turning the rest and digest system back on. This releases chemicals and brain signals to make your muscles and organs slow down and increase blood flow to the brain. The term relaxation response was coined by Dr. Herbert Benson, an American medical doctor, cardiologist, author, and the founder of mind-body medicine. His book, 
the relaxation response, describes the scientific benefits of relaxation and shows how it can be an effective treatment for a wide range of stress-related disorders. The relaxation response is essentially the opposite reaction to the stress response. It turns the rest and digest system back on and can be used as an effective treatment for a wide range of stress-related disorders because it counteracts the physiological effects of stress and the fight-or-flight response. Our bodies are designed to heal themselves, but that rest and digest system must be turned on in order for it to heal. Dr. Benson's research conducted in the 1960s and 1970s showed how activating the relaxation response promotes better health, lower stress levels, increased well-being, and reduced blood pressure levels. There's another reason why we want to turn on that relaxation response. It helps us to be better able to handle our problems. Because when our bodies and minds are in a constant state of fight or flight, it narrows our focus and gives us a sort of tunnel vision. If we can get out of that fight or flight mentality and turn on the relaxation response, even if it's just for a few minutes each day, that gives our body and our mind a break. And that broadens our focus, so we are able to find new and creative ways to solve our problems. You are stronger than you think, and smarter than you think. The answers to your problems are most likely already inside of you. You just need a way to tap into that greatness and set it free. Therefore, these two separate aspects of coping skills, expertise and somatic quieting, are interrelated. Calming down and turning on the relaxation response helps us to get back to the top of our game by broadening our vision and tapping into our own creative problem-solving skills. Next, I'm going to share five somatic quieting techniques and tips. This is like creating a tool belt. You don't have to use every tool in the tool belt. It's absolutely okay to just pick your favorites and ignore the rest. The first somatic quieting technique I'm going to share is to go for a walk. Virtually any form of exercise can act as a stress reliever, but activities such as walking or jogging that involve repetitive movements of large muscle groups can be particularly stress relieving since they offer many of the same benefits as meditation. The benefits are strongest when you exercise regularly. People who exercise regularly are less likely to experience anxiety than those who don't exercise. There are a few reasons behind this. Regular exercise lowers the level of stress hormones. It also helps release endorphins, which are chemicals that improve your mood and act as natural painkillers. Exercise can also improve your sleep quality which can be negatively affected by stress and anxiety. Regular exercise improves feelings of confidence and mood, which in turn promotes mental well-being. Try to find an exercise routine or activity that you enjoy, such as walking, dancing, rock climbing, or yoga to relieve stress, worry, and anxiety. Tip number two is to consider supplements. There are several herbal and natural supplements that help manage and relieve anxiety and stress. Here's a brief overview of some of the most common ones. Lemon balm. Lemon balm is a member of the mint family and has been studied for its anti-anxiety effects. Research shows that taking a single dose of lemon balm increases calmness and alertness. Other studies show that adding lemon balm to a food or drink reduces anxiety and also improves memory omega-3 fatty acids. One study showed that medical students who received omega-3 supplements experienced a 20% reduction in anxiety symptoms. In another study, researchers found that people who took high doses of omega-3s, up to 2,000 milligrams a day, seemed to have the most reduction in anxiety symptoms. Ashwagandha. Studies show that ashwagandha, a medicinal herb, seems effective at lowering symptoms of stress and anxiety. Ashwagandha helps to lower the levels of cortisol, that stress hormone in the body. 
valerian. In studies, valerian root demonstrated antioxidant, neuroprotective, antispasmodic, anxiotic or anxiety reducing, anti cancer, and antidepressant effects. It is also popularly used as a sleep aid due to its tranquilizing effect. Kava Kava. Kava Kava is an herbal remedy used to relieve stress and anxiety and boost sleep. Studies show that this plant extract has a calming, euphoric effect. Vitamin B. Many studies verify that B-complex vitamins have been shown to be beneficial in alleviating symptoms of anxiety. Vitamin B1 is important for balancing blood sugar levels, which are a significant factor in anxiety levels. Vitamin B3 has been shown to help with anxiety at dosages of 1 to 3,000 mg per day. Vitamin B5 supports the adrenal glands, which reduce stress and anxiety levels. Vitamin B6, together with magnesium, can balance out anxiety that occurs in conjunction with PMS. Vitamin B9, also known as folate or folic acid, and vitamin B12 are important in balancing out depressive moods. Although individual B vitamin components offer positive effects, it's a good idea to include a B complex since they work together synergistically. Some supplements can interact with medications or have side effects. So, as always, it's a good idea to consult with a doctor if you have a medical condition. Tip number three, connect with nature. Spending time outside in nature is good for the body and the mind. It helps relieve feelings of worry, anxiety, and stress. Natural beauty distracts us from our problems and just helps us feel good. Studies show that being in nature or even viewing scenes of nature helps to reduce anger, fear, stress, and also increases pleasant feelings. Exposure to nature not only makes you feel better emotionally, it actually contributes to your physical well-being by reducing blood pressure, heart rate, muscle tension, and the production of stress hormones. Tip number four, using aromatherapy. Aromatherapy uses aromatic essential oils to improve the health of the body, mind, and spirit. It enhances both physical and emotional health. Several studies show that aromatherapy can help to decrease anxiety and improve sleep. Some scents are especially soothing. Here are some of the most calming scents. Lavender, rose, vetiver, bergamot, Roman chamomile, frankincense, sandalwood, lang lang, orange or orange blossom, and geranium. Aromatherapy can come in many forms, including using essential oils, scented candles, diffusers, aromatic spritzers, inhalers, bathing salts, body oils, creams, massage lotions, facial steamers, and so on. So there are many available options if you choose to use this tool to help relieve anxiety and stress. Tip number five is to listen to soothing music. The soothing power of music is well established. It affects our emotions and can be an extremely effective stress management tool. Soothing music can help slow the pulse and heart rate, lower blood pressure, and decrease the levels of stress hormones. It also can help to distract us from our worries. Research shows that listening to music can help a person with clinical depression or bipolar disorder get through their worst, lowest moods. When people are feeling stressed and overwhelmed, there is a natural tendency to avoid actively listening to music, perhaps because it feels like a waste of time when there's so much to do and worry about. But adding music to our day is a small effort that can produce great rewards since our productivity actually increases when stress is reduced. To incorporate music into a busy life, you could try listening to calming music while you're driving or doing other necessary tasks like bathing or getting ready for the day. Take portable music with you when you're walking the dog or listen to music instead of watching TV to wind down before bed. If you're interested in learning more somatic quieting tips, there's an article on the Hope for Healing website called 17 Simple Ways to Relieve Worry, Stress, and Anxiety. 
We also have a free audio course on managing stress and a free progressive relaxation audio available. You'll find all of these resources at hopeforhealingfoundation.org. I also invite you to read my book, You Got This, An Action Plan to Calm Fear, Anxiety, Worry, and Stress. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by William Burroughs. He said, Your mind will answer most questions if you learn to relax and wait for the answer. See you next time on Linda's Corner.